Adding zero to anything does not change its value. Multiplying by one leaves the multiplicands unaltered. What to convolve our signal with in order to obtain the same signal? Hi everyone, this is Jan Vlicek from thewolfsound.com and in this video we are going to talk about the identity element of convolution. But what exactly is an identity element? Well, there is a strict mathematical definition, so please excuse my official voice. A neutral element or an identity element with respect to a binary operation star defined on a set capital A is an element E belonging to that set such that E star A equals A star E equals A for each A belonging to the set capital A. Why do we need an identity element? Well, one possible justification could be a system identification scenario in which we would like to be able to represent a system that does nothing to its input. It means that at its output we have the same signal that we feed into its input. Let's consider discrete convolution first. Here we are looking for a discrete signal delta that convolved with a signal x returns exactly that signal x. Looking at the definition of convolution, we may infer that our desired delta should pick only x of n out of the infinite stream of samples x of n. Therefore, it should be defined as follows, that delta of n should be 1 only if n is equal to 0, and it should be 0 everywhere else. Signal defined like this goes by many names, for example, unit sample impulse, discrete time impulse, discrete Dirac delta impulse, or simply an impulse. It also makes sense in the context of filtering, because, well, filtering is delaying, weighing, and summing our input signal. Well, here we delay our signal by zero samples and weigh it by one. So at the output, we get exactly the input. Now let's look how the identity element should behave in the context of continuous convolution. It turns out there is actually no function that satisfies this equation. We need a different type of entity called generalized function or a distribution. It turns out that the function delta that satisfies this identity element property is called the Dirac delta function and it can be approximated by an infinitesimally narrow impulse of infinite height. The definite integral over Dirac delta function is equal to 1. Therefore, it can also be used as a probability density function. These identity elements have a very important property which is called the sifting property. It means that convolution in the continuous case and sum in the discrete case with this delta function, be it continuous or discrete, will exactly sift only one element that is equivalent to the argument shift of the delta function. Now let's look what happens if we shift the discrete delta argument by one. It turns out that shifting the argument of the delta impulse and then convolving it with our signal shifts the argument of our signal, effectively delaying it. So it is the concept of delay. More precisely, convolution with delta of n minus n0 delays signal x by n0 samples. n0 in this case is called the delay length. 
It is often depicted in DSP diagrams as a square box with z to the power of minus n0 in it. That is because the z transform of delta of n minus n0 is exactly equal to z to the power of minus n0. Thanks to the associativity property of convolution, arranging delays in a series is equivalent to a single delay of length equal to the sum of individual delay lengths. The number of applications of delay in digital signal processing is vast. Let me just mention here the delay is the basis of filtering, which, as we said, is delaying, weighing, and summing the input signal. Then there's a huge number of audio effects that base on delay, for example, reverb, flanger, chorus. Also, it is used in panning based on interaural time difference, and it is even used in sound synthesis. For example, in the Carplus Strong algorithm for plucked string. As a last note, I would like to mention that we can view any signal x of n as a sum of weighted and delayed discrete time impulses. That means that we can obtain an arbitrary sample of signal x by properly delaying it. To summarize, in this video, we looked at the identity element of the discrete and continuous convolution. We introduced the sifting property of the delta impulse and interpreted it as the delay in the context of digital signal processing. Finally, we looked at signal x as a weighted and delayed sum of discrete time impulses. If you would like to go even deeper into the identity element of convolution, I highly encourage you to check out the associated article which I link to in the description below. It contains additional viewpoints and explanations concerning the particular properties of the neutral element. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe, hit the thumbs up and turn on notifications not to miss out on the upcoming videos on convolution. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.